Welcome everyone. Today we're in conversation with Dr. Paul Swan. I'm just going to wait a few minutes while people are connecting. If you have a chance, did you see the slide at the start? Dr. Paul Swan's put up some activities today, so for the dominoes, so it looks a little bit like this. We can see it. Okay, and some small dominoes. So if you could download them, that would be, a, you could follow along. Mine are very small because I had my two-year-old help me cut them, so some of them are a little bit out of shape. Now, Paul, this is our sixth webinar. So which, so far we've talked dominoes. We're talking dominoes today. We've done place value, times tables, addition of subtraction, multiplication. So we're looking forward to chatting today about dominoes. It's a favorite. We play it when we travel, we play it at the dinner table, but I'm not sure that we play it to its fullest potential. So I look forward to hearing about domino mathematics. Hello, Heather, how are you going? It's good to uh catch up this uh, this week. The we're just going to play with uh, some dominoes today and the reason I chose dominoes was that they're fairly readily available but I appreciate for uh, some people um, they may not be able to get dominoes and that's why we just made a set that you can cut up to use at home and so forth. So we just made a pretty basic set but I'll work with uh, the dominoes I'm using today will be different colours and I'll explain why we do that and I happen to be using some foam ones it doesn't really matter. The wood ones are very nice, but I do like the different colours, and you'll see why as, as we head into this uh, little webinar. So um, first of all, let's just have a look at the dominoes themselves. So I'll get you to have a bit of a look at the, uh, the screen here, and we'll show you a set of dominoes that I've just set up. Now, essentially there, what you've got is what's called a double six set of dominoes. Uh, and what that means is that you're working from the double six down. You can get different sets of dominoes, but that's the standard one, the double six set. And that's the one that we've made as a bit of a uh, cutout that you can uh, cut your own double six set out. Now at times, we'll talk about other sets. There's a double nine set, a double 12 and a double 15 set. But for everything we do today, we're gonna to use a double six or actually take some out as well. So let's just have a look again at the double six dominoes and I'll make a couple of comments here. So the dominoes I have here happen to be blue, and the reason for I like colour is pretty simple. If I'm working in school with children, it's much easier to sort out, you'll see what I mean in a minute, uh, when I've got a different colour, you can sort the blue out and the red out and so forth and put them back into their individual packets. For lots of people, their dominoes are the black ones, which are fine, uh, but they're all mixed up. And then when kids colour in the little uh, dots there, you can't see them and so forth. So I prefer to have different colours, particularly if I'm working in a classroom. But if, uh, if it's at home, it doesn't really matter. And then I like to put them into individual bags. The next thing I like to do, if we have a look down here, I'm just going to separate out. So you can see I'm just pulling out the red ones because they're easy to spot. Is I like to do an activity that involves sorting the dominoes. There's a couple of reasons for that. Um, when you sort, you're really using your problem solving and reasoning skills. So essentially here, you gotta think about how I might sort it. Now I just happen to have sorted it in one particular way, but children might have all sorts of ways that they sort the dominoes. But essentially, if you look here, the way I've sorted them, you can start to see whether any dominoes are missing. And I've started from this end, and it's a double blank, and all the way through to the double six dominoes. So there's the double six, and all that in that family and that sits there. So that tells me I've got a full set. Now, sometimes I say to children, how many dominoes are in a full set? And they have to do a bit of problem solving to work out that all together, there are 28 dominoes in a set. The other sheet that we've made for you, uh, it's in small size, but you'll start to see how it makes a difference, uh, which you can uh, download and print off. So that's the domino printable that you're welcome to download and print off. And it's got a little grid in it. And that really helps you to pretty well see what we've got here. I just turn my set that you'll see what I mean. Now, if you wanted to set sort your dominoes out, you could do that. And what we suggest to do that would be to simply take that sheet, and if you enlarge it to A3, and then put all your dominoes on it, and you'll see here we've made an enlargement, and then you'll see that you can simply put all your dominoes on there and just check you've got a full set. Because sometimes when you're playing dominoes, or using some of those sort of games. If you haven't got the pieces, it's a bit frustrating. So once again, you can cut some out or play. We're gonna do a couple of little activities and I'll just uh, give you the chance to try a few things. And then we're gonna to head toward a thing called problem solving because often people see dominoes purely as number work. So 
So let me give you a couple of examples of what I do early on when I was playing with dominoes. Now, you see, I've got some dice and I'm going to put them onto uh, my, the table there and you can have a look. And I've got two different dot dice there. And one simple thing would be to roll those two dice and see here I've got a two and a two. And I would ask the children to find the associated domino because dominoes are all related to dice. In other words, you've got all the standard dice patterns of six, 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 five, and so forth. The only difference is that in dominoes, they add a blank. So there's nothing basically sitting there. So basically, they sort of relate back to dice. So let's have a look at this quick game that you could play. Depends on how old your children are. But in this case here, we simply roll the dice and they'd have to find the domino that is one, four. By the way, the domino that's one, four, I'm just gonna pull it out now, is also the same as a four and a one. So all we're doing is a bit of recognition there, matching the dots and so forth. But it's a nice little activity to get them started, starting to recognize those dominoes. And what I like to do is just change it up a little bit and I'll show you one little extra idea that just builds that sort of thinking. So all I'm gonna do is change and you know, my, I've got a slightly different dice in my hand, it's just a numeral one. So I'm going to swap out the white dot dice and I'm going to put in there the one with the numeral that's sitting on. So now I'm not looking at dots anymore, I'm looking at numerals. And if I roll that one, I might have, for example, here we've got a six, four. And so I've got to look here and scan and find the six and the four domino and put it in. Now that's a pretty simple task, but children love playing that game because it's just finding and matching and doing those sort of things. Now I'll take you a little step further on the dominoes because sometimes what we just did there was match some other materials with the dominoes and we turned it into a little game. Here's another example of what we can do. Now I'm going to use some cubes here. Uh, the cubes I've got, uh, I've got them in two different colors and you'll see how they're used here. I quite like these cubes because there's a really nice soft um, plastic so they, they feel good in your hand and they can connect together really easily. But you could use uh, you know, any of your standard sort of cubes or bricks that you have at home, it doesn't really matter. So let's just have a look at an example of what we're going to do. And what I've got now, you see there, I'm going to move some of these dominoes out. In fact, I'm going to move the sixes out just to give us a bit of space for what we're about to do. Young children often have difficulty working out which is the bigger number. So I'll give you an example here. I might pull out a domino. So I'm going to pull out the one. Let's pick out the 5-2 domino. It's going to move the others out of the way there. And what I do is I get them to make a tower. I'm going to lay it down so you can see it. And so this one here is five high. You can see the tower there, that's five high. And then next to it, I'm just going to put a tower that's two high. And it's pretty obvious when you look at that, that the five is larger or greater than two. And so we start to build that sort of idea about which is the bigger number and building that sort of thinking that's happening here. It's not too far a stretch of the imagination to take it to the next level, which is one way to look at the dominoes in terms of mathematics because there's obviously the great games you can play with dominoes, but the mathematics that we would get is, let's, what, what about the total number of dots? How many dots have we got there all together? So building the language. So if we go back and I'll show you exactly what we've just done. So we just had a domino a minute ago, and we had the five two domino. And I said, well, there's a tower that's five high, and there's a tower that's two high. But of course, all together, in other words, when we join them, and that's why I quite like using cubes, because now we're joining them, we have all together, we've got seven. So we can say, well, there's five, six, seven. So we learn to count on from the larger number. You could also use some counters and put the counters on top there, but it's just building this idea of five and two is seven. Now, what I really like about dominoes is what I'm about to show you now. It builds your understanding of a pretty key idea in mathematics. So if you have a look what I'm gonna do, I'll do it with the cubes and with the dominoes at the same time, okay? So in here, Five and two is seven, but we also know that two and five is seven. Sometimes we refer to that as a turnaround fact. So I've just turned that around, and likewise, I'm turning that around, but we've still got seven dots, or we've still got seven in that group. So you start to see how we're building some of this number knowledge just by playing dominoes and so forth. Now we're going to just sort of make a bit smaller set and play with a few other ideas that are sitting here. Now, there's a couple of games that are pretty basic, but they're really good for children just sort of getting this idea of seeing the dot pattern, getting this what they call a subitizing dot pattern. In other words, seeing five, but not having to count five because it's an image. 
that they're holding in their head. So let's have a look at what we can do here. I'm gonna put the other, uh, I'm gonna leave all the dominoes that have got six off for this particular one. And so now, if we were doing something like that, what we're now playing is what we call with a double five set of dominoes. So we've got less dominoes. So we started with a double six set, and now we've reduced it to a double five set. Here's a couple of little games you might like to play. Okay, once again, depends on your age of the, the children about what we're about to do. If they can't handle more, we'll work with what's called a double four set. In other words, we only work from four, four down, and it reduces the whole set of dominoes in there. But here's one. So if you have a look at the screen here, okay, imagine I put this out and they were a bit sort of organized and so forth. Need to make sure that they're showing all the way up there. Here's one. Um, now, I'm going to switch the screen off for a minute. I'm going to take a domino away, and I want you to think about which one's missing. Okay, so we're going to take, take one away in a minute. Okay, the screen's going away. And, okay, I'm going to put one back. Okay, so now we can have a look at the screen again. I might mix it up a little bit and so forth. But one of the jobs of the child might be to work out, wow, which one's missing? Now that's quite difficult. You can see there's a lot of dominoes there. And so in order to work out which one went missing, uh, we could then start sorting. And as we start sorting, you might sort according to things like a doubles and so forth. And by process of elimination, work out which one is missing. And you could set that as I say, at different levels. You could use less dominoes and so forth, but it's a pretty neat sort of idea. Let me give you, oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, the one that was missing was a double four that we took out uh, in there. I'm just gonna put it back in the set. There's a couple of other things that we could do. Take like the same set of dominoes that we just have there, and I'll talk about another sort of idea. So if you wanna have a look back at the dominoes that are on the table, okay, one might be that I pick up pairs. And literally it's the notion of I pick up a pair of dominoes, so the total is 10. So an example might be I pick up the five and four, well that's nine, and I pick up the one, and that makes 10. So that's something worth thinking about. Let me find another pair for you. So we might pick up in this case here, uh, we're gonna pick up the five and one, so that's six, and six would go together with four, and six and four gives me 10. Now all we're doing is pairing up dominoes that sit in that spot. Now you might notice that one of the sheets uh, that we put up there is just uh, like a, a set of blanks, so to speak. I'll show you what the sheet looks like in a minute. But so we can record some of this information. See, one of the issues when you start playing with dominoes is they maybe forget what the answers were or what they did with it, or there's no evidence of what we did. So let me have a look at the recording sheet and I'll show you a little bit how that works. Okay, so sitting on here, I'll just put the recording sheet, which you can download. And it's basically, uh, a blanks template that we have here. And what I've just recorded on there is we might have uh, finding totals to 10, right? So that might be the activity that we've got. And so we might total, for example, a 5-2 domino. Altogether, there's seven dots on the 5-2 domino. And so we're gonna pair it with another domino that's got three. So we might pair it with the 1-2 domino because that'll be seven and three is 10. Or we might pair it with the 0-3 domino because that's 10. Now, it's pretty hard for me to do this, but I'm going to try and keep silent for, a, for you know, a few seconds anyway, because now I want to set a little task for you. So if we take you back to the, the domino blank template, if you haven't got it, that's fine. You can just record it or grab some dominoes. So you see here, here's an example. We've got the five, two, and the three, that's 10. I think there are 30 other pairs of dominoes that will give you a total of 10. Now you might have to split some up as you do it, but how about I give you just uh, you know, 30 seconds or so to find a couple of other pairs that add to 10, and then we'll talk about being systematic in a minute. I said it would be hard to keep me quiet for too long, but I wanted to give you at least a little chance of thinking about, wow, that's quite involved. We're looking at these pairs of dominoes 
that add to 10. It might seem quite simple, but it's a, the challenge is actually there are 30 others. So there's 31 solutions all together. Sometimes you have to pull apart and build it. That takes a lot of persistence. So if you're finding you know, two or three or four or five, that's fine, but you might want to set the little challenge that we could find even more. And that's why we provide a little recording sheet. Now, it's not just that. You can find other pairs that total other numbers, like 14, for example. Now, we won't go into that in the moment. It's just how you take that same basic idea, that same basic game. So if we go back down to the, the um, dominoes themselves, currently you're seeing them face up. And we were looking for pairs that add to 10. But imagine now we turn them all over and we played the equivalent of a patience or, or a, um, a memory game. Sorry, memory game is what we're talking about. Where you turn two over and you look for pairs that went for that. So you could take the same idea and just build it and change it and so forth. It just gives a bit of notion of what we can do. We're going to look at a couple of other things that we can do with dominoes. Now, currently, all we've done is taken the domino and looked at the dots on it, totaled it, looked at the difference and so forth. But let me give you a couple of other things that we could do. So in this case, I'll take you back down to the dominoes and we could play a little game called difference. Now in the game of difference, what we're looking at for is the difference between the dots on the domino. And so we could have all of them or just this subset of them here. And in this case here, all I'm doing is we turn over a domino. So I turn that one over and we've got a three and a one. And the difference is two. So I score two points. Then I can take that one off. Then my partner might have a game of this as well. And they turn one over and uh, I've turned one over now. And I've just turned over the five, two. And the difference between five and two is three. So now the partner is three points. And you start to see how you can play very simple little games like this. You can play with two or three players. Mum and dad could play together and so forth. And it's a bit random because you don't know what's being turned over. But what you're working out is the difference. So not only can we do addition with the dominoes, we can start to do things like the difference. In other words, the difference between the number of dots that sit there. So that's just another little idea that we can play with this sort of thing. Now, later on, we can actually change this a little bit when we talk about dominoes and we can start to build in some of those things, the place value things that we talked about uh, a little while ago. In terms of place value, I'll give you an example of what I mean. So I'm gonna use a very large domino just to make it very clear. Uh, and you'll see in here, so we've got, uh, I always like this as a, a giant domino that I'm gonna show you, you see it in the middle there. I'll move all the other pieces off just so it's nice and clear in this case here. Now, that one's a magnetic domino, but it's large, this helps me to show you. In this case here, if we have a look at that domino, you'll notice that it has a five and a four on it, and we'll have a look at how we can use it in terms of place value. So in here, I've got a five and a four, and if this is the tens place, and this is the ones place, we could say that this is 54. Okay, if I turn it around, and this is the tens place, and this is the ones place, we're on 45. Now I want you to imagine that we've got two dominoes. Okay, so I'm gonna put another domino in here, and now I've got, in this case, 31 and 45. Is there a way that I could arrange those dominoes, one, to get the greatest difference? So we've just been talking about difference a moment ago. How could I get the greatest difference by turning them around? Well, it's probably about having the smallest number in the tens place. So let's just manipulate. And that's what I like about manipulatives. We can turn it around, play with it a bit, get a feel for it. So let's have a look at the, the domino that we've got here. So here's my guess. We're gonna to have to have the biggest number here. So I've got 54. And here, we're gonna have the smallest number. So we're gonna to have to have 54 and we're gonna subtract 13 from 54. And so we can build the largest difference. If we had it the other way around, we could have 45 subtract 31 is probably gonna give us the smallest difference between those two. And see, once again, all we're doing is just manipulating, turning around the dominoes. It doesn't look too scary in that sense, but we can be doing a lot of that written calculation work or mental calculation as we determine the answer to that sort of thing. So you start to get a feel for what we can do with the dominoes. Now, as I said before, sometimes it's easier not to work with the full double six set of dominoes. It can be a bit overwhelming for some children. So next activity we're going to do just involves using what I'm gonna call the double four set. 
Now, the double four set essentially means what we're going to use are dominoes where the maximum domino is double four. Now, once you think about that, if you happen to have downloaded the sheet that's got the dominoes on it, you'll see that that reduces the number of dominoes quite a lot. And so even just the activity of pulling out any domino that's above a double four is worthwhile. So if you have a look now, I'm turning the dominoes over. And this point here, that's a five and a four. So that one goes. Okay, this one's gonna come back in. A five and a five goes. And you start to see anything with a five leaves the arena, so to speak. And we'll have a much reduced set of dominoes and it makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna set a little puzzle up. And once again, you might wanna have a little bit of think time. So I'll try and be a little quiet. That's one that's gotta go. So one of the questions I'd be asking, how many dominoes will there be when I've removed all those extras? And hopefully there's 15 dominoes. That one's got to go because it's got a five in it. So we can double check that. I've got three, six, nine, 12, 15. So that's good. So I've got 15 dominoes and just the act of sorting that out makes a difference. So one, we've just done a bit of a sorting and now we've got far less dominoes. We're using this double four set, makes it a bit easier. And now I'm going to put this into a thing called problem solving. Now, in mathematics, we have understandings. Today we've talked about turnaround, the fact that five and two and two and five will give me the same total. That's an understanding. We've been doing fluency, the things that add together quickly to make 10. That's a fluency thing. But now what we're really going to do is use these manipulatives, these dominoes, to really get thinking going. And so we want to get these things called problem solving and reasoning. Reasoning when I'm explaining or describing what it is that I do. Now, some children are pretty good at reasoning, but they don't have the mathematical vocabulary in order to explain it. That's a whole nother topic about your mathematical language. So here's the, here's the set little question I've got. So now if you see here, we've got 15 dominoes. The double four is the highest domino, so it's a double four set. And here's the little question for you. There's gonna be six pairs within here that total eight. So there'll be six pairs of dominoes that will total eight. I'm gonna give you a little bit of thinking time now if you'd like to try that. I'll try and be quiet and we'll put a few together for you. So we'll give you 30 seconds or so to play with that little idea. And you might, might have noticed as I was starting to do it, you can see that I've got eight and zero. So that gives me a pair that adds to eight or totals eight or the sum is eight. And I've got seven and one and then I've got four and four. So we've got some nice bits here. And now I need to see whether I can arrange the others to make the same thing. So for example, here, I've got six and that's gonna go with two. Okay, so I've got five pairs that are totaling eight. Uh, see if I've got, an, oh yes, I think I have. So there's a three and that's five and three is eight. So there's my six pairs that total eight. Now there might be other pairs to make that, but there's an example of what I was describing as you're using your fluency. So what we're doing is getting our thinking going with, the, with this, the fluency, but now I'm putting in a problem. So it's not as obvious as it might be. And it really gets you to use your fluency and apply it. A bit like why you might learn to play the, the scales on a piano, you're learning it to play the music. Why are we developing fluency? So we can use it in solving problems. So now I'd like to set up a problem. Now it's a much harder problem in a sense, because it's really gonna involve some reasoning, but I think you'll appreciate how even something as simple as a domino can actually get you thinking quite dramatically in mathematics. So here's the situation that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a little bit of information We'll set it up here. We'll use the large dominoes just to give you that sort of information. So if I like to look on the back on the, the screen here. Okay, here's a little bit of information I'm going to give you. We're going to have three dominoes. Now you won't be able to see them all. I'll put some small ones on there. We're always going to start with a double. You see here we've got a double four. 
and we're always going to have a thing called a joining rule. Can you see that four goes with four? I cannot, I am not allowed to join the blank with the four. Okay, I could join that four there, I could join it this way. And now what we're going to do with this idea is we're going to play with this notion here and I'm going to give you the question. So remember we've got a joining rule and it goes like this. Now, you head back onto the screen, I'm going to show you three dominoes, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. So there's one domino, there's another domino, and here's a third domino. All I'm going to tell you about those dominoes is the total number of dots is 21. That's the part of it. So 21 dots all together. Here's another piece of information. This one here is a double. Now remember, if that's say a double four, that has to be a four just here. So now I'm going to once again try and be a little bit quiet. So you've got three dominoes. The total is 21. It's always starting with a double and you must have the joining rule. Now, we've written that down for you a little bit here on this, uh, this sheet here, which has got an explanation about what we've just talked about, which you can download. You can see there might be more than one answer to this. So I'll be quiet for 30 seconds or so and let you try and find an answer to that. Now, I do hope your head's not hurting uh, on that question. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to reiterate. So you have to have, if you start with a double, the next number's got to start with that same number. So double five, your next number has to be five. Well, it might surprise you that there's more than one answer to that. And in fact, we've made a little uh, sheet that you might like to download and get your children to try that. Um, there's a bit of logic to that and we can, uh, we'll put up a little bit of the background to the answer to that question. But the reason I wanted to sort of finish on that sort of question was a couple of reasons. I'd hate people to think dominoes are just a simple toy. Um, there's great stuff you can do with the standard dominoes game. In fact, I love the dominoes game. There's a lot of great mathematics and there's variations in the dominoes game. But what makes this a mathematical manipulative in school is we can get the thinking going. So I'll just run that past you again. So we've got the idea of some understandings we've played with today. We've got the fluency that we can use it for. But the real thing of the future is going to be this problem solving and reasoning about thinking through this solution and that solution and so forth. Uh, definitely more than one solution there. In fact, if you think logically, if we start at a double six domino, so that six and six is 12, it must join with another six. So I've just used 18 of my 21. So now my next little bit is restricted to only three. So there's only a couple of solutions that you can use with a double six. And then we might try a double five. And then we might try a double four. And so we're quite systematic in the way that we do it. So I hope that, uh, hope that uh, you've enjoyed having a play with some dominoes. There's heaps of things we could do with dominoes, but that just gives you a little bit of how you can move at different uh, age levels and get, the, get a lot out of dominoes. Paul, thank you so much. Thank you to your team today for organizing all the games and having it all ready for us, the dominoes. I actually got a little bit stuck on that last one, but I'll tell you what I did do. I did five, 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 three, six, six. Okay, I'll have to I think you've got too many dominoes, you only need all three. <laughs> that's all right, that's okay. But we'll give you a Thank special you. tutoring afterwards, uh, Heather, all right? I think I might. Maybe my, maybe my son will help me out there. Listen, I love the idea of the dominoes, the games, the missing dominoes, pairs to 10. There are 30, is it 30 or 39 solutions? There's 30, after the original, there's 31 yeah. altogether, but I showed you Perfect. one, so there's 30 more to find. Okay, well, you can test me. You can test me out on that in patience. Look, 
for anyone that wants it available, all of the videos will be available on Monday on drpaulswan.com.au um, and under web webinar or under your YouTube channel and also on edxeducation.com. Um, and also the sheets will be available, will continue to be available. Paul, I have one request for the next webinar. Yes. Now in Dubai, I used to wear this amazing tie with all the mathematical symbols. Oh, okay, yes, I do have that, I, yes. I've got I think two. we're missing that. I've got two of them. All right. No worries. So thank, thank you very much for your time today. And thanks to everyone for joining us. Bye. Bye.